Hi friends, welcome back to part 2 of Floral Diagram and Floral Formula. You are watching Petals of Biology. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my videos. Let us begin with the floral formula. In the last video we have discussed the floral diagram of hibiscus flower. The same flower I am going to use here for writing the floral formula. How to write a floral formula easily and properly. The floral formula is the representation of a flower in the form of a formula. So for the formula you have to write numbers as well as symbols. So let us see what are the symbols used in writing a floral formula. So the first symbol is This means the flower is actinomorphic. That means you can divide the flower into two equal halves cutting through any plane of the flower. Such a flower is known as actinomorphic flower. If this is a flower, you can cut the flower into two equal halves through any plane passing through the radius of the flower. Such a flower is known as actinomorphic flower. So the next symbol is this one. These two are equal. That means this is a zygomorphic flower. This, this symbol also can be used to represent a zygomorphic flower. Zy zygomorphic flower means you can divide the flower into two equal halves only through one plane. Uh, say for example the flowers of pea plants. It is having a special uh, floral structure. So you get a two equal halves only through a single plane of the flower. Either through either through this plane or through this plane only, not in all planes. Such a flower is known as a zygomorphic flower. Whether it is a bisexual flower, whether it is a unisexual flower, these things can be represented like this. If it is bisexual, it is like this. If it is a female flower, you have to represent it like this. If it is a male flower, you have to represent like this. Okay. So you have to represent the other vegetative floral organs like calyx and corolla. Calyx can be represented by using the letter K. Corolla C. Then comes the andrician A. Gynetium G. So these are the letters, let, letters used for representing different floral organs. Now we have to represent the numbers. There may be more than one uh, andrician, more than one uh, uh, gynetium present in a flower. So you have to give, give the numbers. See so if, if you take the example of an and, uh, andrician, there are four statements you have to write like this, four statements. Now you have to represent the union between the organs, cohesion between the organs. If the andrician are united, you have to show it in a bracket. If the gynetium are united, you have to show it in a bracket like this. This means uh, four statements and the four statements are united. Okay. Now you have to, now you have to represent the uh, adhesion between floral organs. That means if the corolla is attached to the uh, stamen or the stamen is attached to the, to the corolla, you have to connect both of them using a line like this. Uh, if there are countless number of andrician and gynetium, then you have to represent by using the symbol infinity. This is the symbol used to represent infinite stamen and the gynetium. Okay. Now you have to represent one important thing that is the position of the ovary. There are three different types of flowers based on the position of the ovary. They are hypogynous, perigynous and epigynous flowers. See, this is a hypogynous flower. Here all the floral organs like sepal, petal, andrician are just below the ovary and the ovary is in the topmost position. All the other floral organs are arising from the base of the ovary. This type of flower is known as hypogynous flower. Now a perigynous flower. Here you can see all the floral organs are almost in the same level, neither superior nor inferior. Here, here a cavity is present just below the ovary, so the ovary is having a stalk, so it is in the half inferior or half superior position to the other floral organs like sepal, petal and andrician. 
So see, this condition is known as perigynous. Now, epigynous flowers. See, this is a diagram showing an epigynous flower. Here, all the floral organs are arising from the top of the ovary, and the ovary is in the inferior position. This is the ovary, and all the other floral organs, except for petal, androecium, all are arising from the top of the ovary. This condition is known as epigynous. So, how you represent the position of the ovary in a floral formula? So we are using the letter G for gynecium. If there are five number of gynecium and it is united, you can represent like this. And now you have to represent the position of the ovary. The position of the ovary is not possible to represent in a floral diagram. It can be represented only in the floral formula. If this is a hypogynous flower, you have to draw a line just below the number, straight line just below the number. This means this is a hypogynous flower. If it is a perigynous flower, you have to give straight line like this. If it is an epigynous flower, you have to draw a line like this. So, so this way you can represent the position of the ovary. Now, we can write the floral formula of hibiscus flower, which we have discussed in the last class for the floral diagram. So, it is a bracteate flower. Bract is represented using BR, letter BR. It is an actinomorphic flower, it is bisexual flower, it is having epicalyx, 6 in number, it is having calyx, 5 in number, and it is united, it is having corolla, 5 in number, free, it is having androecium, numerous, androecium is in monodelicus condition, united condition, so you have to give brackets. Then the last thing is the gynecium. Gynecium is 5 in number, it is also united. Now you have to represent the adhesion between the floral words. For the base of the corolla and the base of the staminal tuber slightly united here. So that you have to represent like this. By looking at this floral formula, you can understand these things. It is a bracteate flower, actinomorphic flower, bisexual flower, it is having six epicalyx, five uh, sepals are there, they are united, and uh, it is having five petals, three, it is having numerous united androecium, and the corolla and androecium are petal and, and uh, petal, it, it is epipetalous, corolla and androecium are uh, having uh, union, and gynecium is five in number, and it is the position of the ovary is uh, hypogynous. We forgot, forgot to draw the line. So th this flower is hypogynous, so you have to draw a line just below the number. Okay, after completing part two, now we understood what is a floral diagram and a floral formula, how to draw a floral diagram and how to write a floral formula properly and easily by looking at the flower. Friends, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and share. Thank you.